there's a trick with the IRR function that allows you to point at non-adjacent cells. The reason this is useful, here we've got some cash flows and what we want to know is what would happen if this was the cash flow and then in that year we sold. So you'll see we've set it up, there's a cash outflow, then the inflows. We've worked out what the potential sales value would be, so simply that the yield type calculation. And then all this is, is working out if there was a sale and the cash flows for the year, what would the number be? And we can now calculate the IRR, which would basically say, take the IRR up to that point, then add on the last year's cash flow plus sales value. The way to do that, so I'm going to do it via here. So we're going to do an IRR. And the values, and this is very important, you must put brackets around it. So I'm going to say when you're in that cell there, look at that cell. And notice I've just put the same reference. This I know is going to have to be dollar signs. So what it's going to do is going to include from here to here in this case. And over here I'm going to put a comma. And then what our last year's cash flows were and close the brackets. When I say OK, you'll see we get 52%, minus 52%. But now when we copy it across, notice you get these numbers. And just to explain better what's happening, if you look at that last one, what it's calculating is what is the RR starting here, so negative 100,000, 35, 79, 12, 9, 18, 4, 3, 5, and then for the last year, it uses this number, which is the sale value plus the cash flows for that year to give you a, what the IRRs would be in each year if the sale happened in that year.